Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're starting a new chapter on linear algebra, and we're going to deal with eigenvalues and eigenvectors and all the other things associated with those. We're starting out with the concept, what are eigenvalues? And in order to get an understanding of what they are, we need to make the connection with differential equations. Here we have a typical differential equation. It's a homogeneous differential equation. And from that, we can calculate what we call the characteristic equation, which is right here, simply from the coefficients of the y double prime, y prime, and the function y. And then when we solve for the r in the characteristic equation, those values then become part of the general solution, which is written like this. And notice that r1 and r2, which are the solutions to the characteristic equation, become the coefficients in the exponents of the general solution. Back in the 18th century, Leonard Euler, and I think this really means Leonhard or Lionheart, I think that's the translation for that name, for the first name. And by the way, he was Swiss. He was born in 1707 and lived until 1783, which back then was a pretty good age. And back in 1743, he saw the connection between solving differential equations like this and the root to the characteristic equations being also the eigenvalues when they made a transformation from this concept into what we call linear algebra. Let me show you what that concept is. So if we go back over here, we notice that we start again with the same differential equation, but then we make a substitution. We let x1, which is a general variable, equal y, and x2 equal y prime. Then we can say that if we take the derivative of x1, that would then be the derivative of y, and that would then, of course, be equal to x2. And if we take the derivative of x2, that becomes y double prime. And of course, when we go over here and solve this equation for y double prime, we get this right here. We can then say, by making the proper translations between x1 prime, x1, x2, and x2 prime, that x1 prime can be written as 0x1 plus 1x2. Again, here, x1 prime, since it's only equal to x2, we can write it like this. And x2 prime, which can be written as y double prime, which is equal to this. And then if we make the proper translation for y and y prime, y prime right here is equal to x2 and y is equal to x1. So when we plug those in appropriately, we have to switch the order of them, we can now have two equations that express x1 prime and x2 prime in terms of x1 and x2. The reason why we did that is if we now take the coefficients of x1 and x2, x1 and x2, and place those in a matrix, we'll call that matrix A, and then we have a general vector x, which then includes the two variables x1 and x2. And then if we come up with this relationship, where we take the matrix, which was derived from the coefficients of the differential equation, and subtract from that some constant, this is called the eigenvalue, and we'll get to that in just a moment, multiply times the identity matrix, of course, here we're dealing with a two by two matrix. So the identity matrix is simply a matrix with zeros in the corners and ones across the diagonal. If we then take that matrix A, subtract from that some arbitrary constant, we call that the eigenvalue, and set that determinant of that equal to zero, and we solve for lambda here, that again is the eigenvalue, you'll notice that you'll end up with the very same equation here as you do over here, the characteristic equation that gives you the general solution of that differential equation. So Euler realized that he was able to find a way to turn this into a matrix format, and then using the determinant of this, coming up with the characteristic equation in terms of lambda. And then he said, well, lambda is then what we call the eigenvalue of this particular matrix. And that eigenvalue is the same thing as the solution to the characteristic equation of that differential equation. Now I can see that there's a real purpose here. We can see that we can now find a way to take differential equations, write them in terms of matrix formats with the proper translation, and then find something called the eigenvalue of a matrix like that that allows you to find the solution to a differential equation. Now, of course, there's other purposes for the eigenvalue, but at least here you can see a very strong connection between this, and this was done several hundred years ago by obviously a very smart mathematician. 
Now, that's a good start for us to understand what an eigenvalue is. Now we're going to learn how to actually find the eigenvalue and later on the eigenvector and other things of these types of equations and these types of matrices. Hopefully, that'll shed some light on the concept of what an eigenvalue is.